Okay, so we have our second problem on a single phase induction motor. And the problem reads, okay, so a, a 2.5 kilowatt, uh, 220 volts, 50 hertz capacitor start motor has the following parameters for the main and auxiliary uh, starting, at, at starting, right? Okay. So we have the main impedance denoted as Z main, okay? So the main impedance is given on the react resistive part is 4.82. Uh, and then on the reactive part, uh, it is uh, 7.25. And then uh, the auxiliary winding, you have um, the impedance, the resistance is eight ohms plus the reactance part is nine, 10 ohms, okay? So the question is asking us to find the magnitude and the phase angles of the currents in two windings when rated voltage is applied to the motor under static conditions. And then the second question, we have to find the value of the static capacitors, okay? That to place the main and auxiliary uh, winding currents in time quadrature at stating. Okay, <clears throat> and the, finally, we also have to repeat, okay, part one, when the capacitors of part two is set in series with the auxiliary winding. Okay, so uh, how are we approaching this problem? So the first part is just uh, a simple problem. We just need to divide the voltage, divide by the impedance of the respective winding. Okay, so let's see. Okay, let me just increase the thickness of the pin. It. Okay, so solutions. Okay, so for the first part, we have to find the current. So we have to find the current in the auxiliary winding and also the current in the main winding. Okay, so I'll denote them as IA and IM. Okay, so the current in the main winding, IM, okay, will be given by the voltage, okay, because we are supplying the same voltage to the, to the two windings, both of them, the same voltage. So the voltage divided by um, Z main, right? So Z main, I'll do this as ZM. So the voltage is given, okay, so the supply voltage is simply 220 volts. Okay, and then the Z main, the Z main is given as what? Okay. So the Z main is simply equal to 4.8 to divide by 7.5. Sorry, I repeat, the Z main is 4.82. And then there is the reactive part is 7.5. Okay. So let's divide the two. So you know this is the angle. For well, this one is at zero degrees, right? Okay. So for you to do that, you just have to convert the numerator or oh, the denominator to polar, okay? And then divide the amplitudes, right? So when that is done, you're going to have any rectangular form that is 13.99 minus J, 21.04. Okay, arms, right? Okay, so, how did I do that? I first converted this to polar. You know how to convert to polar. So I have to find the magnitude of that, right? So the magnitude of that impedance, Z main impedance, uh, the magnitude of it is simply the square root, okay, of 4.82, okay, plus, this is squared, 7.25 as well as squared. So you're going to get this, the magnitude, and the angle, it's angle of the main, Theta M be just B. Oh, sorry, a theta of the Z main, right? Theta of the Z main. So this will be theta of the Z main. And this will be got uh, tan inverse of the imaginary part divided by the real part, 4.8 uh, 
two. So you're going to get the angle here. So once you get the angle, divide the magnitudes, right? The magnitude you get here. Okay, so 220 divided by the magnitude you get. And then you <clears throat> also the angle of the numerators, the numerator is simply zero. This 220 is at zero degrees, subtract by the angle you're going to get here. So, and then later on you convert back to rectangular. This is what you get, right? In rectangular form. Now we can convert this now to the respective magnitudes, right? So the magnitude of IM. Okay, so this will be called the square root of the imaginary part and the real part squared, right? So the real part is 13.99 squared plus 21.04 squared, right? So when you put that, you find that the magnitude of the current in the main winding uh, is equal to, okay, it's equal to 25.27, okay? So 25.27 amps. Or the angle theta of the main winding of the current is simply, okay, negative tan inverse. Okay, why am I saying negative? Because this current, as you can see, the imaginary part is negative while the real part is positive. So you have the angle in this quadrant. The imaginary part is Y axis, the real part is uh, X axis, right? So you have the current in this quadrant. Okay, that 25 amps is in this quadrant. And this is the angle that I'm talking about, right? That is theta m. Okay, so this theta m is what we're going to calculate here. And this angle, since we, we are measuring in the clockwise direction, it's a negative angle. Okay. So tan inverse of 21.04 divided by 13.99. And this angle comes out to be negative 56.38 degrees. Okay, so that's the magnitude of the angle for the two, right? So this is a main winding. Okay, we do the same thing for the auxiliary winding, IA. So IA, this voltage is the same to 20. The impedance of IA, auxiliary winding, is... Uh, Eight plus J ninety. Okay, and then this gives us. Okay, so this gives us about it zero point zero zero two one two five minus J zero point two four one seven amps in rectangular form, and of course you can find the magnitude of this, just like I did before. So if you do that, you find that the magnitude of that guy is simply equal to 0.2417 amps. And then the phase, you repeat the process. Okay, phi A, um, take the tan inverse of imaginary over real, you'll be able to get um, negative 89.5 degrees, right? So you have that, you have the phase as well as the angles. So that's the end of the first part of the question. And then part two, part two of the question says, um, what does it say? Find uh, the value of the starting capacitance that will place the main and auxiliary winding currents in time quadrature at starting. So what does this mean, okay? Point to the nature of the single phase induction motor is not self-starting, okay? The single phase induction motor is not self-starting. And like the three phase where the, the three currents lags or each other, okay, the angle between each other is about 120 degrees. It creates a, um, it creates the revolving magnetic fields, okay? It creates the revolving magnetic field. But this one here, it doesn't create the revolving magnetic field because, um, the two windings that you have, okay, for for the revolving magnetic field uh, to be created, the angle between them, okay, the angle between the auxiliary and the main winding, the angle of the currents between the auxiliary and the main uh, winding must be 90 degrees, okay? Now, if you look at this, okay, if you look at this, look at this, this current for the main winding is uh, 56.38, 
and then for the auxiliary winding, it's a negative 89.5. If you notice the difference in the two winding, the two uh, phases, it's less than 90 degrees. So the current, I mean, the type of field that is created here is called is pulsating kind of field, okay? For the torque to be produced, there should be revolving field, okay? So, or rotating magnetic field, in short. So for us to achieve that, we have to place these windings, okay, at 90 degrees each other, okay? So we need to add a capacitor. So no wonder it's called a capacitor start. So for this motor to start rotating, to produce a torque that we need, we need to have this capacitor at the start. And then later on, when the motor reaches a certain speed, this capacitor is going to automatically be disconnected from the circuit, okay, by the use of, uh, for example, a centric fugo uh, switch, okay? So how do we approach this problem here? So we need to add a capacitor. Okay, that's what we need to do, right? We need to add a capacitor. So you know that the capacitive reactance is negative, right? Okay, so we need to get a new value of the ZA. So this is a new value of ZA. So I'll call this ZA prime. This is a new value. The resistance part will not change, right? What will change is simply, okay, the reactance part, 19, okay, minus J, xc this reactance of the capacitor why is it minus remember that the reactance of the capacitor is simply one over j omega c okay so when you take you simplify this take a j on top multiply by the uh, j both side uh, both on top and down end up having negative j okay one over omega c you know this right? okay so that's the reason of a minus here okay now let me explain this just using a, a very small phasor diagram. Right? So I'm going to draw a very small phasor diagram here. Okay. So this is a phasor diagram that describes the two currents. Right? Okay. So this here is a voltage, applied voltage, right? Okay. This is applied voltage. Oh, let me just... Uh, Okay, let's say this applied voltage. I don't think yellow is visible. Let me just use a different color, I think. Let me use uh, red and increase the bit of thickness like this. I think this will work. This applied voltage, right? This is a voltage applied, right? And then we have two currents, right? The, in the auxiliary uh, winding as well as in the main, winding right so we have the first current here at what angle okay in the main winding you notice the angle is at negative 56.38 it's negative so it's lagging behind the voltage the angle is negative so it's lagging behind the voltage right okay this current here is the i main and this angle here is negative 56 okay 56.38 degrees Okay, and this side of this triangle, okay, just a minute, I'll come back to that. And then I also have another current. Again, it's negative, okay? This one is almost 90 degrees, right? As you can see, it's negative 89.5, right? This current here, may use a different color for this. I'm going to use yellow. This current here, okay, this current is it. I auxiliary, okay, IA. And the angle from the voltage here is C, negative 85, uh, 89.5, almost 90 degrees, right? So you notice that eh, the overall angle between the two, this, this winding, between the two, the angle between the two here is not 90 degrees, okay? We need to put this, these two at 90 degrees to each other. So you notice that if you, you take the difference between the two, you see that that angle, okay? That angle is how much? So 89.5 minus 56.38, right? 89.5 minus 56.3, okay? Uh, about 33 point something, right? 
this is 56.38, yeah. About say 3.12, something like that. Okay, now what to increase this angle instead of it being um at this the 3.12. Okay, remember that we have to disturb the current that is flowing in the main wind uh sorry auxiliary winding. So instead of this um being instead of it lagging, okay, lagging the, the voltage at this 89.5 degrees. What if it leads the voltage? Okay. So I want, I want to take this uh the auxiliary winding in this quadrant, right? I want it to be here. So I'll call this IA prime, auxiliary prime. So this current comes as a result after adding a capacitor in series with that winding, right? So we're going to end up having this. Okay, so this angle here. So this current now is going to read the lead the, uh, lead the voltage by this angle, I'll call this angle um, phi A prime, right? Okay, from the auxiliary winding. So we're going to get a new angle, okay? It's going to lead, okay, this voltage by that much, right? So whereby this overall angle between the two now, between the main winding and the auxiliary winding, this angle now has to be 90 degrees. This is what we want to achieve. The angle between the main winding and the auxiliary has to be now 90 degrees. Okay, so we have to add the reactants. Okay, add more reactants. That is going to cancel out with the, the first time. Remember that the first time you have these reactants in the auxiliary winding, right? Okay. Remember that you have to take this um, uh, this 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 current from this position to this position. So I have to overcome. Okay. You have to overcome this reactance from this position up to here and then up to there, the new position, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do now, we add the capacitor. Okay. We're going to add the capacitor. So how is that capacitor? This capacitor XC, okay, this is a capacitive reactance, XC, is simply equal to the original capacitor in the auxiliary winding, the original, uh, so the original reactance in the auxiliary winding plus, okay, some value, x, right, okay, some new value going to add, okay, where x is simply the difference between what, the capacitive reactance minus the inductive reactance, remember the initial it was actually just the inductive reactance, this one here, okay, so that z a prime, the new value, I can just simplify it in this way, as 8 plus, the difference between these two, right? So I'll call this as just x. That's what I mean, right? So I need to find this value of x first. Okay, you're going to understand later. Okay, so I need to find this value of x first, right? Okay. So why am I doing this? What I need to do, or why I'm doing this is uh, I want to make sure that the current that I'm going to have now flowing through the auxiliary winding will be leading the main voltage, okay? The voltage, the supply voltage. Okay, be leading. Remember that leading current has a positive angle, right? Okay, lead for leading power factor. We need to introduce leading power factor in this, right? So this angle has to be positive, okay? Phi A prime. Okay, so just like I said, I said that, okay, we need to find this angle. First of all, I need to find this angle, right? Phi A prime. So Phi A prime is simply 90 minus what? Oh, minus this angle here, as you can see. I need to find this this angle phi a prime here. This angle here, phi a prime. Okay, phi a prime. This phi a prime will just be equal to, since I know that, okay, the angle within the two now, within the two winding, has to be 90 degrees, right? Okay, so it means that this phi a prime is simply equal to 90 degrees minus 56.38. Uh, so it's supposed to be 38 degrees, okay? So that's what I know. So phi a prime, okay, will be equal to 90 degrees minus 56.38, okay? So if you subtract the two, you get about 33.62.
Okay, so this angle here is simply the 3.62 now. Or just say it was a 3.6, okay, like that, right? Okay, now, I now have to find the reactance, right? Okay, suppose this, uh, this, uh, this, this magnet represents the, the total impedance, right? Okay, of this, okay? Remember, you have this impedance, right? Okay. This impedance. So this impedance now is the impedance of the auxiliary winding. Okay. And then this angle here is phi auxiliary, right? Prime in this case now. Okay. And then the opposite to it, okay, the opposite to it is simply the reactance is X that we need to find, right? Okay. This X here, the new reactance. Okay. The new reactance there. And then this uh, horizontal is simply the real part, right? With the resistance here. So the resistance doesn't change. You're not even changing anything with the resistance here. So it's still eight, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and calculate that uh, X. So we can use tangent, right? So you know that tan, tan of that angle, which is phi A prime, will be equal to X divided by what? R, right? Okay, we know that. So from this, you know that there x is equal to r times uh, tan over, okay, like that. So what is r? r is eight, okay. So I have eight ohms tan, okay, phi a. What is phi a? Phi a said is that three point six two, right? Okay. So let's see. So uh, that is eight tan the three point six two. So this is about 5.0. So the value of X is about 5.319 ohms, okay? So we know that now, you know that the capacitive reactance, according to the equation here that I just uh, introduced to you, the capacitive reactance will be the sum of the initial reactance that you had plus X, right? So this XC will be equal to XA plus the value of X that we just calculated, right? So XA it was three point. Uh, how much was that? Oh, so nine ten, right? It was nine ten plus five point three one nine. Okay, so if we add this, we find it. Okay, five point three one nine. So this is nine fifteen. Okay. Point three. One nine ohms. Okay, now we have found out the capacitive reactance. So what's the next thing? We can now find the actual capacitance, right? So now that the capacitive reactance simply equal to one over J. Okay, so for now let's start to forget about J part, right? Okay, so this is the one over omega C, right? Okay, so we can find now the capacitor. The value of the capacitor, since we already have the capacitive reactance. So this will be one over omega xc. I know that omega is only two pi f, right? So this is two pi f xc. So let's substitute the values that we have. One over two pi. The frequency is 50 hertz. The capacitive reactance we found is 915.319, right? Okay, and after doing that, you should be able to get it, the value of about um, 0 0.00000. Okay, five zeros, I think, and then three, four, seven, six farads, right? And this can be written microfarads as 3.48 microfarads. Okay, so this is the value of the kappa. Oh, it's actually, it's actually, this should be C, not XC. This should be C, okay? Because they are solving for C, okay? So that is it. Now, what is the new uh, impedance now, okay? What is the new auxiliary impedance? So this is ZA prime. This is just simply equal to eight. The distance doesn't change, okay? Plus C, okay? So I can replace this guy here, 19 minus XC, okay? So this is uh, J, 
Okay, this is the imaginary part minus xc, which is um, 915.319. Okay, so z a prime, this is the 8 minus j, 5.3. Uh, three one nine. Okay, so if you see now we have z a prime. So from this we can now find what we can now calculate the we can now calculate the what the the the, the, the current right? Okay. Oh, actually this will be the third part of the question because now we <clears throat> we have actually so this is the first the second part of the question just ends here right? Okay, now uh, the second part of the question, which is, uh, is asking us to repeat part one when the capacitance of part two is inserted in series with the auxiliary winding. So now, when we say that capacitance is going to affect the reactance, right? This reactance no longer be 19, it's a now to be negative. Okay, as you can see, now it will be uh, um, this one here 19 minus the, the capacitive reactance, which is 915.315. Okay, this is what you get, isn't it? So you see that even in the sign here now has changed. So this is going to cause the current to start leading the uh, uh to start leading the voltage. Okay. <laughs> so you can see now that the current. Okay. So the current in the menu uh, in the uh, auxiliary winding now becomes voltage over the Z A prime right. Okay. So the voltage was two twenty. Okay. Over eight. Minus J 5.319, right? Okay. So, how much would be that now? Okay. So, let's see how much would be that. Okay. So, this is the. Okay. So, this is B, uh, 220, uh, 22. Point e. 906, right? At what angle? The 3.6. Just like the same, like I explained, right? Okay. So this angle now is positive, as you can see. It's not longer negative, right? Because here, when you find the angle here, it's negative angle. Okay. But here, this guy is at zero degrees. Subtract the two minus zero minus minus this, right? So you end up having this. This is a leading. Okay. So have a leading power factor. Okay. Because this angle now is leading the voltage, right? So we with this we are going to have what we end up having it the uh, rotating magnetic field that we wanted to achieve for the starting torque. Okay, for torque to be there to develop, we need to have such kind of fields. So it's more like now we're creating a two-phase machine, isn't it? Okay, where the angles between the two currents. Uh, the, the angle between the two currents is actually 90 degrees. Those two currents are 90 degrees apart. Okay. And the other thing is that we've also increased the current by just introducing that capacitor. You notice that before we put in the capacitor here, we have this magnitude of the current, right? It's very, very small for torque. Okay. You know that as you are setting the machine, okay, the current that is actually passing, that is the machine draws, is almost high, uh, very mag uh, high magnitude, okay, times and the uh, normal current that is needed, right? As they are selling the, uh, the motor. So you notice that uh, this current that we now have calculated, the initial current was actually 0 0.24 before we had introduced the capacitor, right? 0 0.21 or uh, 2417. And then after introducing the capacitor, you see that the current that's flowing through the auxiliary winding is 22.906. If you divide that, you see how many times that machine now is going to, uh, how, many, how many times the current will be needed? Uh, 22.906. Okay divide by 0 0.24 something something right it's about 95 times you can say 90 times right okay so see how much current is going to flow in the auxiliary winding as a result you end up having a high starting torque at that point okay the torque increases okay so that's how this whole about this problem unless there's a question please ask in the comment section i end the video now thank you